My bed used to be warm with her. They call me a shut-in, the princess in the tower, and I suppose I am in some ways. But I had a whole other world in my chambers with me. Ellie, my sublime servant. She was perfect, heart and mind. She was... We would stay up day and night in my chambers and discuss until there was no air to carry our thoughts. We talked about the world, the problems, the solutions. We talked about the country, the kingdom, the crown and its sins. We were quite revolutionary, to be honest. My father was the king and I was on the other side of the castle discussing anti-feudal, anti-monarchist philosophy with a low-born servant girl whom I loved in secret. There was a kind of thrill in that, I suppose our little taboo world. We thought we were so smart, and we were, in a way. I've never had a conversation with a man even half as stimulating as with her. She and I would refine our politics the way a smith would temper a sword. We would discuss and debate and argue and fight and compromise and agree. Our talks would get heated and cooled and become stronger for it. We would say that if we had real power, the world would be a better place. An easy thing to say for those without power. I was called to meet with the king one morning as summer was ending. The cold stone corridors called me as I made my way to the throne room. My smile faded into a regal disposition, one befitting a royal princess. When my father saw me, he gave me a rare smile and I felt warm for the briefest of moments. My dear daughter, he said to me as he approached, The time has come to do what must be done. He spoke of duty and sacrifice, of family and love, of order and stability and how he needed me now more than ever. I was offered a position of power, a seat on the council as his royal advisor. He said the things I had always wanted to hear and followed them with the thing I feared the most. I know about her, he said, your queer bedfellow, that low-born woman. Send her away. His words winded me. That was the price of his offer. It wasn't fair. Alone with her, I would talk of how I wished to face my father and my king and unleash my temper upon him. But there was no such fire in me then. His eyes met mine and I froze. He told me that she was keeping me brittle, that the love of a woman can undo even the greatest of men. He told me to send her away and I would be stronger for it, Father said I was an intelligent woman. I knew how the world worked, even if my moral judgment of it was contentious. He said that a seat on the council would temper my moralist idealism with practical realism. He told me I had the potential to be a great woman and a great daughter. I don't remember what I said to him. I don't remember leaving the throne room. I just remember that I could barely breathe when I approached her. Ellie my sublime servant. She knew me so well. I didn't need to say a single word. She saw the look on my face and understood. That evening she left to serve some other noble lady. I took my place on the Crown Council and began my work. I am Mary Moran. I do what must be done. The King smiled at me and I just felt cold.